Hi friends. I wanted to share with you today a little tip I hope will help you. Uh, the main challenge I see you all having is this, um, you know, really I call it a skill of water control. And of course, watercolors, that's what they are. They're, they're all based on water. Uh, they flow, they move, um, it's a bit hard to control. So I'm, I'm hoping to continue bringing you these little tips that might help you with some of these uh, challenges that you have. Um, and especially it sounds like around controlling your water. So today I'm going to be showing you a couple techniques uh, that really in all my years of painting, when I took classes in college or high school, this was the first thing they taught us. And I am going to teach you in a way that I will also show you how it applies to painting florals and leaves and such. So the first technique that we're going to be doing, and, and, and actually let me back up, I'm using my Princeton 8 Velvet Touch round brush. Uh, if you do want this particular brush, um, the link is in my description. I know I've had a handful of you that wrote me and said you ordered the Velvet Touch Princeton Round and got either the Long or the Long Brush, which is the 3950 series. Those are all fine. They, they will work. Um, the brush is longer because they make it so that you can stand back uh, from your easel and paint and uh, you can use it with acrylics or oil. The shorter brushes, the shorter barrels or handle is made specifically for watercolors um, because you're painting close up. You're not painting away from the easel and really the velvet touch all that is is it has a really beautiful feel you if you've ever used those pins i think they're called dr grip they have that real nice almost soft spongy -ish feel in your hand that's what i love about the velvet touch so just to clarify that i do have a link in all of my descriptions um I also have a link to my supply list if you want to use that. I'm getting a lot of questions about paper. Um, and let me show you. I use this paper a lot, and I am sending many of you a link for this to help you on Amazon. Now, I buy this, it's it's made by Artisto. There's 30 sheets and it's 140 pound, 300 GM, uh, cold press. I buy these in packs because I, I believe the link I've been sharing, it, it comes in a pack of three because I go through tons and tons and tons of these books. Um, I'm painting daily. Um, I'm, you know, going through a lot of these. So I have found for the cost, I buy them in bulk of three and I'll go through those easily in a month. And it's a pretty, I'm, I'm pretty surprised how good this paper is. So the link for this is in my supply list as well. It's Artisto and I buy it in, like I said, a three pack and I really like it. It's also good to travel with because it's a little bit smaller. Now, my favorite paper to paint on is Arches. Um, one second, let me see if I have that. I don't have that in front of me, but it is the Cold Press 140 pound. There's a link to that as well. I'm trying to help you guys find these supplies um, as easily as I can because they can get kind of confusing. Um, and I love Arches paper. It's just, you know, I, I can't afford to buy a ton of it to be painting on all the time. So, you know, for my daily 10 to 12 paintings I do, I don't use that. So this is a 140 pound 
uh, cold press paper I'm using. I believe this one is Arches. Um, I'm painting on the other side. And if you notice, I am taping down my paper and I'm, I'm doing that for a couple reasons so that I can pick up my board and show you some things and I my paper doesn't move and shift. Um, if one big tip, I believe in this a thousand percent, if you're going to spend money on one of your supplies, the one that I feel is going to make the best difference is your paper. Um, practice on you know, like the Artista, which is really great. Canon XL has a great paper. Um, but you're going to notice when you use a paper like Arches, the paint is going to react differently and you will definitely see a difference. So occasionally, you know, buy yourself a pad of the Arches and play with it and notice how the paint is a little bit different on it. So let's start here. I've got my palette. Today I'm going to be using some olive greens, um, sap greens, maybe a tiny bit of blue, and um, maybe some pinks. I'm always trying to use something other than that Quinn Magenta, but I'm just in love with it. So, uh, so what we're learning today is washes and it's really important to practice this. So please, please, um, you know, come back to this video and watch it because if you can get the feel for this, you, it, it's going to give you so much more control with your watercolors, just understanding how the water and the, the pigment uh, responds and flows. So I think that'll really help you out. Um, I'm actually using this little palette today. I don't know if I have that linked, but I sure can. I just got that on Amazon. It's just a nice small one. I've got my two containers of water, one to wash, one to rinse, and then my paper towel here to blot my brush. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so let me write up here. So these are washes. And practice these over and over. I've drawn here four or three squares and in each one I'm gonna do a little bit different wash for you. So let's start with the wet on wet, which is going to be right here. So wet your brush, pick up some of your paint let's go oh let's i guess we'll go ahead and use that quinn magenta because i just can't seem to get enough of it so i'm making it like a tea consistency it flows it's beautiful okay and let's just make a line on the top of this first square okay so I'm going to tilt my brush a little. So if you notice, this little line of paint here, and I'm just going to continue to pull that down. I'm just working that little line down. I'm gonna pick up some more paint. This is just a flat wash, okay? So I'm just working it. This is the exact um, amount of paint you want because look at that beautiful sheen. So I'm just continuing to apply the same amount of paint. Let me pick up a little bit more and just keep pulling that line down. Okay, a little bit more paint. So I'm pulling this bead of water down and I'm getting this beautiful, even color, 
just working that bead of water down my page and here I am at the bottom. So as you see, this is wet on dry and notice how crisp the lines are, how even the um, color is in a flat wash, okay? I'm just going to pick up some of that paint at the bottom. There we go. So this is your flat wash. And then after I do these three, I'm going to show you how you might apply these to petals or florals like we're working on. So the next one is going to be a uh, graduated wash, okay? So we're going to go from dark to light. And I talk about that a lot in my paintings because it's important to have different values in your paintings. So let's start again at the top and draw that down just a bit. And then I'm going to rinse my brush a little, not fully, and just gently scrape it off and go into this with more water, okay? Pull down, okay? I'm going to add a little bit more water on my brush, scrape my brush off, and keep going, okay? So look at how beautiful that is. Rinse my brush again, just gently scrape it off. You don't have to be aggressive scraping it off. And there you go. So practice this. Look at how beautiful that is. So we're going from dark to light. You could use that on a petal, which I'm going to show you. This could be either the outer edge of the petal or it could be um, the inner edge of the petal where it attaches to the middle or the stamen. And as you move out the uh, petal, you, it would just get lighter and lighter. Um, to me, this is also a form of kind of pulling the paint. Uh, if you've watched my other tutorial, what we do. So this last one is, I call it color blended or, um, well, that, that's basically what I, what I call it. I'm color blending, and this is beautiful in a leaf. And these are all wet on dry because I'm going with wet paint into dry paper. So my edges are nice and uh, crisp, and I'm getting a very flat, even wash and color, okay, because I'm going wet into dry so right where i'm putting that paint is right where it's going so let's go into this last one i think is so pretty and i'm actually going to use a green color so i'm going to go into let's set this down a second and go into my green a little bit of water i'll add to that there we go okay so let's start again at the top. And I'm just going to lay down that first line. No puddles, it's just a beautiful sheen. And you could even do a whole page of these, okay? Just to get used to creating that sheen, no puddles. So let's go down a few more. And I'm going to wash my brush. And now I'm going to pick up some yellow. This is Cad Yellow, Windsor Newton. There we go. I'm gonna add a little more water to that. So it's got that tea flow and consistency. Always scraping gently that excess paint. Now I'm going to go into this and barely tap Okay, and start coming down. Now you can 
kind of help it along there, like so. Now I'm going to rinse my brush just a tiny bit and go into that yellow again and start pulling that down. If you find that you're getting puddling, what you can do is just tap your brush on your napkin, okay? So there we go. This is, you've got your green up here. Hopefully you can see that. And then it eventually goes into this yellow and then full yellow. So this is beautiful, just like this is on leaves, on petals. Um, this is a great practice. I'd encourage you and invite you to draw a bunch of these squares on your practice sheets. Um, this is the perfect practice to use your Artisto uh, paper and practice a whole page of these until you get that muscle memory and you get that familiarity and comfortability with creating these washes with a sheen, no puddles. Okay, so let's just, let me label these for you. So this is a flat wash. Okay, flat wash, it's all the same consistency, the same um, value. And then the second one we did here, I refer to as graduated. We're going from dark to light just by adding water. This is also a way to lighten your colors without using white paint. Um, I was taught in college, she, my teacher, one of my teachers wouldn't even take a um, lesson from me if she saw that I used white paint. So I taught, I, I learned rather to lighten up my colors with water. Um, so this is a graduated wash. All of these are wet on dry. Okay, and then this one here is a color blend. Now, this is what I'm referring to these as, okay? Wet on wet, you're starting with one color, no puddles, just a sheen, and then you clean your brush and start adding in some of that yellow. I've also seen people just gradually start adding uh, more yellow to their green and do it that way, and that's perfectly fine too if that works for you. Um, so you get this beautiful color blend that would be beautiful in if you were painting water, uh, petals, um, leaves. I think it's gorgeous. So let's just practice this flat wash on a leaf. I'm sorry, a petal. So you, it might look like this, wet on dry, here's your petal, okay? And you're just filling it in. You can use a little bit of the side of your brush. There's no um, puddles, okay? So you've got this beautiful flat wash, okay? So flat wash here, just one, one color. Let me paint that in too. Got a nice, even, wet on dry. If you have those puddles, you can just kind of move them down. And if you have a petal, let me just make a petal here at the end and you don't like that because when that dries, you might not like the way that looks, dry your brush and just soak it up, okay? And now it's gone. So let's move on to trying a graduated wash with a, pet, a um, flower here. So I'm going to, again, 
create that petal. Okay. And now I'm going to rinse my brush a bit and I'm going to go into this. Now this very much for me reminds me of kind of push and pulling. So you're just adding in more water and you're getting that beautiful graduated lightning. Now I might even go back and add in a little bit more dark up here, okay? And you're just gradually getting lighter, okay? So there you go. And now let's go into a leaf and we're going to do this color blending. So let me grab some of my green. I will link all these colors in my description for you. So let's do a leaf. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to go into my yellow. Now I did get a little bit of green in there and that's perfectly fine. And Let's go into that leaf with the yellow. Look at that. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. So go back into my yellow. And now go up against this. Okay. So there you go, you've got this beautiful blending. Now you can always go back into it like I'm doing right now if you really wanna blend it more, but really it, it works pretty well like this. So these are some great practices. Um, another thing I'm also doing is making these little tutorials I create um, available for $20, $25 on my Etsy. And I put all my notes, I put my colors, and um, hopefully when you have these in person, this is something I wish I would have had in learning all of this, is to have my teacher's notes. I think that would have been really great. So there you go. Um, so as you notice, when you do this color blending, you're getting these very soft edges because you're essentially going into a wet color with more wet color. So you get that beautiful blend here. Same here, you're going into paint, wet paint with a wet brush. So you get this blend. Okay, so I hope this helped you. Um, I love these colors. Please uh, grab my free ebook. The, the link's in my description. Um, I specifically have a Neptune brush, um, number eight. It's also Princeton, and it's a really great brush. It has the short handle, and um, it's a very reasonable synthetic brush. And then I have links to all my paper too. So have fun with this. Um, like I said, practice a whole page of flat wash, controlling your water. Because when you're learning water controls, this is going to be your biggest skill to develop is being able to control your water and your paint. It, once you get a good feel for that, everything else is going to be so much better and so much easier. And you're not going to feel like, oh my gosh, my water's going everywhere. I can't control it. Um, so do a whole page of these flat washes, then practice doing this graduated wash where you're adding more water. Let me write that. 
until you get to a very, very light version, light value of this color. And then here, starting with one color, adding in your either analogous color is what I would probably use. I think using opposites wouldn't be a good idea because, and, and let me show you what I mean by that. So I don't know if I have this link, but I can link this for you. This color wheel is amazing. I love it. Um, in college, I actually hated color theory, but it's really been a help as I've gotten older to understand it. So colors opposite each other on the color wheel are referred to as complementary. They, they add a pop. Um, they're opposite on the color wheel. The thing it to remember is, and this is really important, if you're getting kind of muddy colors when you're painting, it's either because you're not rinsing your brush enough and you're carrying over whatever color you used into your next color. That's why it's important to have a wash container and then a clear water rinse container and to change your water often because as soon as it looks like this, you're going to go into your next color with that tint to it. And if you're using a light color like yellow or a pink, it's going to turn muddy. So going back to the color wheel as well, if you use opposites, if you mix them together, they turn to mud. It's also a, a fun way to get like a black color or a dark color to, um, you know, create shadows. Matter of fact, if I have a yellow flower, I will many times create that darker shadow color using yellow and its opposite or complementary of purple because it creates a shade or dark color with undertones of the yellow, which is in my flower. So I use when I am blending colors right next to each other, these type of colors. This would be beautiful together, okay? Blue green is beautiful. I use that on a lot of my leaves. I do a green leaf and I add in a Prussian blue, gorgeous. So I, I hope to um, share with you more on this color wheel. I think it's really fantastic and a big help. Um, so grab one of those if you like. And I will have this um, available for you to purchase. I will put more notes on here and... Um, you know, let me know if you have any questions. I hope this helps you master this, and I promise you, you will up your confidence with watercolors, how to work with them, how to control them. And uh, I'm working on a online course for all of you, a beginner's online, which I think is going to be beautiful. So make sure and sign up for my email list, and you'll be the first one to hear about that. All right, friends. Thank you so much for being here, and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you.